Hey, welcome to the show, everybody. This is live at Epifan. Uh, you know that because it's Thursday at three o'clock. We are live here every Thursday. Uh, and we talk about live video production stuff. We talk about our own equipment. We make encoding equipment. And today we're excited to be talking about uh, a subject that is personal for both Dave and I, which is how to do music remotely. Uh, since COVID happened and we're all doing everything remotely, one of the things that we're missing in our lives are uh, being able to play music together. So Dave, tell me, have you tried anything in the last month to try to play music with the people that you know? Not, uh, not virtually from my house. I know uh, a couple of the guys I played with, they had a, a little get together in the driveway of, uh, of one of the guy's houses. He's got a very long driveway. They kind of all spread out. Kind of the drums were on the lawn and amp set up. So they had a little thing uh, a week ago on the weekend, just, just getting together for the first time that they've played together in months. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't make it out. But um, no, it's been, it's been a lot of, you know, playing, uh, practicing on my own, but not really getting together with any other musicians at all. Yeah, it's tricky. And so hopefully today we can uh, shed a little bit of light on how you might want to do it, uh, because there's some great ways to do it. And there's some really terrible ways to try and do it. Uh, we've learned a few things over the last couple of days while we've been experimenting. Um, so we'll walk you through what we've figured out and hopefully that gets you rolling. Um, music is particularly tricky. We talked about doing performance art uh, over uh, a live stream or a conferencing software. And we talked about doing art, uh, painting, that kind of thing. And most other things that are, do not rely on audio are much, much easier. But audio presents a unique challenge because of the, the latency that you get through all these video communications. Um, yeah. Anything where you need to be that well synchronized is just just a challenge to do remotely. Um, so, you know, music, as well as you might know the music, there's nothing quite like being in the room with 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 true eye contact and hearing things oh, in real yeah. time. So it is it is a challenge, and um, you know, some people have learned to work with some of that latency and and make it work for them. It's still not perfect, but it it can be done. Um, but it's, it's definitely the people I know who have done it when they get back in the room together, they're like, ah, this is, this is how it's supposed to be, uh, when you're, when you're actually together, but, uh, there are ways yeah. to make it work and there are ways to get some stuff done. Um, so we're going to talk about a few of those and even over, I would say the period of, you know, the time that we've been working at home, which, you know, was early March, um, things have changed. So I, I've seen changes to the products and the different software over even over that period of time as there's been a pretty big renewed interest in this whole, how do I play remotely with my other bandmates or how do I find other people to play with? So there's been kind of a renewed interest there and we've seen, um, you know, multiple platforms actually add some capabilities very recently, including Zoom. So um, we'll talk about that as we as we get into the details. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a fun time right now. Like there's no real dominant player in this industry. Somebody's probably going to come out of this being like the place to go for for rehearsing with over music or presenting music uh, over a live stream. Uh, but it's not there yet. So we get to talk about all these kind of people trying to make new tools. So um, let's jump into it. Um, we can talk. I've got a little slide deck here with some ideas about things we want to talk about. And the first one is an asynchronous performance. So what do we mean when we say asynchronous here, Dave? We're talking about where you don't need that, you know, perfectly synchronized um, performance. So if you think about two people playing together at the same time, the same piece, that is synchronous. Here we're talking about either one person playing on their own um, mm -hmm. or, you know, a, a way of, of producing music or working with musicians where you're not actually playing simultaneously. So you're not in the same space and you're not trying to, you're not trying okay. to synchronize over distance. That's really, so you, so the, you want to put on a concert from your kitchen. Basically you want to do some kind of presentation to your audience, but you don't have to worry too much about their feedback. Exactly. Yeah. And, okay. and so that, that removes the whole latency piece. Um, and the ideal setup really for that is to, is to leverage live streaming. Um, so it's, it's perfect for this kind of thing where, you know, whether it's out to Facebook or YouTube, wherever you're going to reach uh, the viewers on the, 
on the audio side at home, you're really just needing a very, very simple setup to be able to capture what you're doing in your room and get that out to YouTube and get it onto to your viewer screen. So mm -hmm. basically you'll need a camera um, and a capture card to bring that camera into a computer. And then you'll need something, some kind of audio interface or a mixer with a USB output or something to be able to bring your actual audio from your microphones or your instruments into that computer. Um, so that, that could be just a fairly inexpensive mixer that has a USB output. It could be a mixer into an audio interface or in some cases microphones or some instruments directly into an audio interface. So you've got a range of kind of options depending on whether it's, you know, a digital piano you're trying to capture or an acoustic guitar or a violin, whatever the instrument or the voice is, there's a few ways you get it there. But once it's into the computer, it's fairly simple to then use your, your standard kind of streaming setup to be able to reach YouTube and do all of that. And you really mm -hmm. don't have to take much care for optimizing drivers for latency or any of that stuff that, that you need in the synchronous performance here in the asynchronous performance. It's really just you're doing things in your own time. It gets captured and encoded and sent out and the viewers see it in their time. And that's that's really all that matters. And I know we're going to get comments in our chat and uh, I encourage you to do so if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook. We'll keep an eye on those. But a lot of people are going to wonder, why would I need to invest in a capture card and an audio interface? I can just use my cam, my computer with its webcam uh, and the mic that's built into that computer. And you totally can. So you can just do yeah. a really basic setup with just your computer, the things that you have. It can be your phone and you can communicate over uh, live streaming uh, or conferencing. But we're recommending a setup here that's for someone who maybe wants to take it to the next level. They want to make sure they have great sound and not just OK sound. Um, that's right. So that's the difference here with this kind of setup and the kind of setup where you might just want to use your laptop. Uh, and we were also just suggesting live streaming here. And that's because... Uh, conferencing software, listen to it and compare it to a live stream. A live stream, you can basically get as high quality as you want. There's no limitation there. Whereas conferencing is always incredibly compressed uh, sound and video. So the video is going to look pixelated and it's going to look small compared to what Dave and I are doing right now where we're live streaming. We can bring in really high quality audio and video feeds. So if you want to make a great impression on your audience, we suggest you try live streaming and try using real cameras and real audio equipment and your audience will love it. Exactly. Yeah, it makes a big difference just to, especially on the audio side. And if it is a, a music performance, obviously audio is is the primary sort of content there. So you want to make mm -hmm. sure it sounds good. Um, yeah. One of the alternatives we're showing here for this solo live streaming setup is is to use a hardware encoder like our Pearl Mini, which basically replaces the computer and the capture card and the audio interface from the previous diagram. So really our Pearl Mini is all of those things bundled together. So it's the streaming software plus the computer plus the audio interface plus the video capture. Um, and that allows you then to just plug your microphones directly into Pearl, your camera directly into Pearl. Here we're showing an instrument like a guitar being plugged directly into Pearl. That's not quite how it works. I wouldn't recommend taking a bass guitar or a guitar and plugging it into Pearl. But certainly if you're playing that in a room and you're miking that that amplifier that you're playing that through, that, that mic can go directly into Pearl. So I, it's not an instrument interface on the hardware encoder, um, but it can take... Uh, you know, mic'd instruments, or if you have keyboards or things that have line level, um, you can bring that directly into into the Pearl Mini. So depending yeah. on what it is you're trying to capture, Pearl Mini gives you that really simple way to get rid of the, the need for the capture card, the need for the, the hardware audio interface, and then the computer, it frees you up just to have this dedicated appliance that's super easy. So... Yeah. It if this was me setting it up, there's no question, I would want to have a mixer between all of my audio equipment and my encoding equipment because mixers are designed to handle audio really, really well and you can do a little bit of compression if you want it. You can add effects. You have complete control over it. So I cannot imagine a situation like live or like remote where I just go directly from my instruments into the output, right? So uh, having some kind of interface between your instruments and your recording equipment is probably a good idea. Exactly. And, and 
most people are going to have that kind of equipment around um, mm -hmm. if they're performing. You know, if you ever perform live elsewhere, same thing. You're always going into a mixer so that you provide a good mix either for your own monitors or for the, the front of house. So um, that equipment is the same equipment. You just have to come out of that mixer, usually at line level, right into the Pearl and, and off you go. And that will give you really high quality, as you said, keeps all of your effects that you have on your mixer. So if you want to, you know, set your levels properly, your pan, a little bit of EQ, all of that stuff, you can tweak all of that, get your sound just the way it would be in a real live performance where people are in the room, but then take that mixer and plug it into something like Pearl that can stream it. So while I, you see my eyes looking down here, it's because I'm just checking out our chat on YouTube. So okay. I see Linda here and Tim Trot and, uh, uh, lots of people saying hi. So if you have any questions about what we're doing today, make sure you put your uh, comments into the, the YouTube chat is really what I'm checking. I'm supposed to be checking Facebook, but I don't have it open right now. So sorry for anybody who's watching Facebook and asking questions there. Uh, but let us know how it's sounding and let us know how it looks. And we'll, we're trying to make adjustments on the fly. As always, we're trying new technology today that we've never used before. We're using SRT for our entire production. So that's kind of a sidebar conversation, but uh, uh, let us know if you're watching. Yeah. So, uh, we've talked about using a hardware encoder, uh, we've talked about using capture cards to bring in audio video for a live streaming setup. Um, you could also do a setup where you might want to bring in multiple guests to a production. Uh, these could be, like, what we're looking at in this diagram kind of uh, makes it look as though we would want to bring in multiple live guests and they're performing together. Um, that's not what we're recommending here to, <laughs> today. Uh, that would be a terrible terrible production. I wouldn't watch it. I would turn it off. So no, that, that. Would, that would be very difficult. Um, but what we are trying to show here is you could have different, different musicians or different bands uh, at different locations and you could create more of the kind of online festival thing where one band plays and then you, you turn it over to the next band or the next performer and then you turn it over to the next performer. So here we're not trying to bring remote performers together to play, you know, kind of in that virtual space. The performers are playing in their own individual spaces and we're bringing them in one at a time. So those are either solo performers uh, that you're kind of letting one play and then move to the next, or it's groups of performers that are together in physically together in one space. And then you're going from band to band or performer to performer. So this is more like the uh, the shows we saw early in this whole pandemic, there were a couple of them, I think, done by Global One that had, you know, the Rolling Stones and it had uh, Elton John and a number of other performers. And they didn't try to combine performers together live. Instead, each performer uh, was doing their own thing. Now, that one, I believe. Yeah, but they was, weren't live. They were yeah. all via, like recorded video clips, which they were just playing. So essentially it could have been done two weeks ago and they just pushed play on the whole production and like edited and post. And there's nothing live about that. Exactly. It's simulate. It's kind of like simulated live, right? That's right. And so mm -hmm. this is kind of taking that same format. So you could make the show look in that same format, but actually have your performers performing yeah. live, taking requests if, if you wanted to by chat or other means. So this would allow you to have that same kind of format, but actually have people performing live and streaming live. So, mm -hmm. um, so that's again here we've got some some technology out at at the side. Here we're showing Pearl Minis that allows you to stream. In this case, you're not streaming directly to YouTube. Instead, you we're streaming to a Pearl Two, which is then bringing in all of those feeds and then switching in between them. And that's basically how we're doing our production today um, is George and I each have pearls at our house. We're sending to a Pearl 2 that's in our dedicated studio in our Ottawa office. And then our producer camera is doing all the switching and bringing our feeds together. Um, the only difference is we are actually interacting live, but here we're just showing it as though I were to go and speak and then you were to go and speak. And so for uh, truly playing together, the level of, of kind of synchronous nature of that is, is really difficult to do. And we'll get to that because there are some programs and some platforms that are meant to solve exactly that. This one is not. It's really just meant to allow you to bring one performer after another. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is kind of our uh, specialty in terms of uh, encoding software and allowing people to communicate through or uh, live for live streaming applications. 
in a lot of cases, you're going to want to do something that's much more instantaneous where you get immediate feedback and you can talk to people during your show. So in this case, we're talking about a synchronous performance, um, either where you want to try and perform together or maybe you want to do a take turn thing where you perform and then I perform and I comment on your stuff like a like a lesson. If I'm right. We're teaching each other. Uh, I could see that working really well. Um, without having to worry about being on sync like a metronome together because that's going to uh, drive you crazy. Exactly. Yep. Uh, and we're going to we're going to try to play a clip here which is a band that's trying to use these kind of platforms. So we'll start with that and then we'll get into the platforms, but we'll let you take a look. Um, this is a clip of musicians trying to play synchronously. possible um, but certainly not simple and certainly not the experience that you would normally have being in the room together and being able to uh, work with each other's video cues and audio cues um, yeah it's amazing what a little bit of latency will do so latency is basically the delay it takes for Dave to hear I or for for me to hear Dave in this case like our latency and our latency today is probably what is it 50 milliseconds or something like that right dave uh if we were to look at our latency stats we'd see something yeah like it's that. it's in that area it's it's in the yeah. you know tens of milliseconds kind yeah. of range um so that's that's okay for conversation but that kind of latency is very difficult if your musicians trying to play together yeah um, i can't imagine it even when i when i play with uh my band we're in a room together and half the time we're looking around going it's not quite right. Like it, it, it's really hard to get a groove in person. So I cannot yeah. imagine adding the wrinkle of be, having a, additional latency to each individual's feed and varying latency as well, because it's not going to be consistent. So uh, it's a huge hurdle to overcome. But there are some tools that are that are trying to do this. So we'll talk about some of those tools because it's kind of exciting. Yeah. So the first one we can we can talk about is Zoom. Um, so everybody's pretty familiar these days with with Zoom or Google Hangouts or similar ones that are really meant as as video conferencing software tools. And um, there's a couple issues with just using Zoom straight out of the box. And that's mainly around it's trying to do compression on the audio. It's doing echo cancellation and it's trying to suppress background noise and all that sort of thing. So you do have to go into your Zoom settings and take care of some of that. It also tries to do automatic uh, level adjustment or gain adjustment on your on your audio to try to uh, um, accommodate for when you're speaking. You may be a little further from the mic or you may turn away from the mic. It's trying to adjust for all of that. And if you're trying to do a musical performance, um, a lot of those dynamics are very intentional. And so we don't want to... Uh, you know, have Zoom kind of undo that work when you're when you're a musician. You're trying to convey emotion through dynamics. You want those dynamics to go all the way through unaltered. So you do need to take care um, to get Zoom to pay attention to those things for you, or at least not eliminate them. Um, and there are some settings um, that we can uh, that we can go into in Zoom and do that. Here we're showing the setup is is quite simple. Um, Again, you're going to need a capture card if you want to bring in your video as or you're using, you know, a webcam from from a laptop. But if you want a really good image, again, you're using a professional camera coming through a, a capture card. And then on the audio side, similarly, you've got an audio interface and most probably a mixer before that audio interface. And you're coming into Zoom. Um, I tried this when we first started working at home, probably mid-March, maybe late March was when I tried it. And there were all kinds of issues trying to do this with Zoom. Um, it was both the latency, which is quite hard to deal with when it gets beyond 20 milliseconds. Usually below 20 milliseconds, most people can not quite ignore it, but it doesn't. it's not so bothersome. Once you get up above 20, 
you really start to notice it once it gets up above about 40 or the or 45 it gets unbearable so there really is a fine range where that latency starts to really affect um, you know what you're hearing and what you're doing so in the case of zoom you each individual musician is sending their audio up to zoom zoom is going to mix them together as it does for your voice when you're just on a voice call and then it's going to send back um, the mix to you and so that's that's how zoom would work out of the box um, so it's not great for um, for that kind of application and it does require some tweaking. Uh, we noticed that it now has a feature called share my audio, my computer audio, um, which is great because if you can bring your music into uh, your computer, either through an audio interface or maybe you're running virtual instruments on your computer or you're even got a digital audio workstation running, if you can take that sound source and feed it into Zoom, it actually does a very good job of sending it to the participants in a one-way um, kind of thing. So it's good for um, sort of the teaching kind of part of it. If I was a teacher and I wanted to show a student something and then they wanted to respond, you could use Zoom for that. It's not perfect, it's not ideal, um, but it can be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did our tests earlier today and you know, you played some songs just through iTunes or something like that and, and vice versa and it was okay. The only issue was just the compression. Uh, the, so the audio is not great, it's just okay. But if all yeah, you're trying to do is communicate, that's okay. Yeah, and in those kind of places where you're not doing a perfectly synchronous one where we're trying to play together, a little bit mm -hmm. of latency can be tolerated. So if it's a teacher thing, but if in the synchronous environment, it can be done, but it's very difficult. So playing together yeah. over Zoom is a really tricky thing to do. And that's mostly because of that latency. Um, mm -hmm. uh, there are other platforms um, like Jamulus and Nim Jam and Jam Kazam and there, there are a whole bunch of them uh, that are really written specifically to address that application. So unlike Zoom, which is primarily a voice conferencing tool, these are platforms that were developed specifically for the purposes of letting people play together over the internet. Um, and there are a number of them out there. We've shown Jam Kazam here and Nim Jam. Um, there's Jamulus and a few others that, that we looked into. Um, they, they all work fairly similarly. There are kind of two flavors. One is, is works much like Zoom in terms of the functionality. And here, that's what we're showing where as a musician, you get into your computer, you run the, let's say the Ninjam app or the Jazz Kazam app on, on your computer. It's sending your audio up to the server. It's going to mix in you know the drummer's going to do the same the guitarist does the same the vocalist everyone gets mixed and then that audio gets sent back so that you can hear everybody's audio and you play completely together as close as you can with the latency and the real trick here is to try to minimize that latency as much as possible so for each of these each of these applications or these these programs they all um really emphasize the need to get the latency down as low as possible. And in this diagram, there's there's many sort of sources of that latency. So first of all, you're going from a live instrument, let's say a guitar, and from the time you hit the strings, you're going through a mixer, that's very low delay, going through your audio interface, that's gonna introduce some delay. Then your computer feeding that into the application is more delay. That's going through, say, your Windows driver or your Mac OS driver, and then through a connector into the application. And then you've got your internet delay. And that's, again, if you wanna plug in uh, hardwired into your, um, if you plug in directly to your router, that's gonna help. Wi-Fi adds even more delay. So you can cut down some of that delay by plugging in ethernet. Um, and that works fairly well, but that's the delay that's most difficult to control is up to the server and back. And so some of these tools have a different ways of doing that. Some you can host your own server. So locally you can download the server, you can host it so that if the band that you play in, those people are fairly local to you geographically, you'll have the best chance of getting a low latency connection to them as opposed to 
just picking some server on the internet that may or may not be even in your your local city so there are some of them have central servers some of them you can implement your own server and run it locally um, but the consensus generally is it can work but it's difficult so you've really got to spend the time to get all the latency down as minimal as you can and at the end of the day you might have a great kind of performance out of it one day and the next day you go to use it in the exact same manner and the latency is just higher for no fault of your own just in the network things are being routed differently and you're kind of held hostage to that so mm. it, it can work but it's it's a difficult one i think we have a video clip here where we show people actually using um jam kazam and getting together and so i'll let you listen to this a bit So there we go. Um, you can see that it can work. People can play together. Um, but I can tell you from the research I've done, it's not easy. And I think if the goal is to, um, if the goal is to really tighten up the band and, and rehearse, it's very difficult because even at a fairly slow tempo, you're gonna be a 16th note, an eighth note off from everybody else and then you have to start as the as the delay increases or varies you need to anticipate where that beat is going to be and as you try to anticipate it others are trying to also anticipate it. and of course your estimations are not going to be the same and what you find is it's it's people trying to find that that unique pulse but that pulse keeps moving side to side and and you speed up a little you slow down a little and everybody's trying to do that to find each other and so you can stay reasonably close so that certainly as we saw in that clip, you can recognize the song. It sounds like music, um, but certainly it sounds more to me like musicians who know the song but haven't necessarily rehearsed it together, uh, mm -hmm. as opposed to when you've got a band that's used to playing together, rehearsed it well, and you see them live and they're super tight. Everything is just right on the beat and they have a real groove to it. It's really hard to get a groove going when that beat is moving around and people are kind of chasing each other to try to find where each other are in the dark. So it makes it difficult. I see, yeah, I could see two kinds of people being really interested in this kind of solution. The first person would be someone who really actually needs to practice. Like they don't have a choice. They've got their professionals and they need to get together with their people to keep things moving. Um, the second group of people would be the people who are like really into trying to solve computer problems and music problems at the same time, because it's a real kind of tinkerer's dilemma here to try to get this working and, and get that latency to the point where it feels natural. So I can see a lot of people just wanting to play with this, wanting to see if they can make it work. Yeah. Uh, I know your eyes kind of light up in a way that's a little different uh, than when I talk to you about other just basic music things, because you've got this great music thing and then this big technology problem to try to solve together. So. Uh, it would yeah. be kind of fun to try this. We should uh, get our hands dirty on this and uh, see if we can make it work sometime. Yeah, and for any of the um, people who want to try it, there really are two flavors out there um, between sort of Jam Can Zam or Nin Jam. There's, there's, there's two ways of doing it. One is you literally all try to play together as I described. So you're trying to minimize that latency and everybody's playing right on top of each other as you would in a real live environment. Um, Ninjam takes a slightly different approach in that it allows you to play, let's say measures one through four or bars one through four. And then the rest of the band or the, all the other members will hear what you've played in bars five through eight. And right. you'll hear what, what they played in one through four when you're playing bars five through eight. So mm -hmm. it's a very different experience from playing in the same room. People say it, it's kind of a neat exercise. It works in a pure jam kind of construct where you're really just throwing out ideas and people are running with them. It you can work like, in that kind sorry? It's like that, uh, you know that song structure where I start singing a song and then you wait four bars and you start singing the exact same song over top of my song. 
And it ends up being this kind of weird yeah. melody where we're all singing this kind of choral arrangement together over top of each other. It kind of works. Um, exactly. It reminds me of that a little bit. So Tim, Ta Tim Trot Productions here on YouTube is saying that one of the solutions might be a daisy chain mix. So I think this is the kind of workflow he's talking about where it's a daisy chain. You know, I start and then you start and then you're, you're always counting people in. Um, exactly. And I could see this working well for people who actually play structured well, either they play really structured music where they have, they know they're going to play 16 bars and then they're going to switch to eight bars and, um, or people who are incredibly loose and they just go over the same four chords, like a 12 bar blues for, well, 12 bars. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I think, I think it can work in those contexts. Um, certainly if you're, if you're used to jamming and by jamming, I mean, mostly improv where, mm -hmm. You know, it's visual clues and it's kind of, okay, the saxophone player is going to have a little go for the next 12 bars and everyone just supports him. And then he's done his piece and everyone looks over and the bass player kind of goes, yeah, I'll take it from here. And they do something in that context. This kind of thing can work because you just have these little four bar gaps or eight bar gaps or whatever in between that where people hear, okay, that guy's finished his thing. Now I can jump in and I can do my thing. So um, it can be kind of fun from that point of view but it's it's not really what i would call a band rehearsal tool uh it works for jams it works for improvisation and in fact some of the features of these tools are to find people that you may not know otherwise oh, uh, community in your community part, right? yeah so mm -hmm. you can reach out and say hey there's a guitarist that's on nin jam or whatever and you can message them and say would you like to play together mm -hmm. and certain other ones will have kind of open rehearsal rooms where people are playing and you can just kind of wander in and start playing with them. Um, mm -hmm. So if, from a, from a social aspect, it's got some, some really neat things that you wouldn't be able to do if you weren't online, similar to the gaming kind of uh, structure, totally. right? And it where allows people like, imagine you're like a little Stevie Ray Vaughan at 15 and playing like crazy and you have played your way out of like everybody in your town. There's nobody who can, you can really play with to be able to find people around the world that could be at your level or just the, the level that you like. Uh, yep. That's pretty incredible. Uh, we can't really do that very easily now. So that's why music is always centered in these hubs. You have these cities that pump out musicians and everybody else is kind of uh, picks up the rest. Yep. Um, we yeah. have a couple of questions here in, in, our, in our, sure. our YouTube stream. They're uh, pretty straightforward. So Thomas Media, sorry, Thompson Media is asking uh, if Zoom is the only platform we found that had uh, good audio control to be able to adjust the audio settings. He's looking for other platforms and I don't know, I haven't found any. I've tried many different conferencing tools and I would say all of them are more basic than Zoom for control. Uh, some of them are higher quality and some of them do other things, but I didn't get any others that allowed me the granular control over my audio settings. Yeah, in a certainly in a conferencing set of tools, I conferencing would agree. Set, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, think, I think they are the best. Um, so that's why I'm waiting for some platform. Some platform's going to come out and become the Zoom for audio people who just want to be able to do really detailed work over there for jamming and stuff like that. I, yeah. This is my prediction, at least. Yeah, I th I think I think this will evolve, and and I've seen you know a lot of this stuff. There was there was great interest between kind of 2010 and 2014. There was a lot of development on Jamulus and and Ninjam and all these things. It's when they kind of evolved. Mm -hmm. And they've kind of been put on the back shelf for the last several years. Uh, I forget which one of them. I think it was Jamulus. The last kind of Facebook update they did was 2016 or whatever. They kind of put it to bed because it just wasn't getting the attention they needed. It, you know, people weren't using it much and they didn't really see a, a runway for it. That's kind of been revitalized a little and, and they're seeing their users uh, come back and actually new users joining in quite large numbers. Um, but the technology, frankly, hasn't really moved forward to solve some of the problems that, that existed in 2010 or 2014. And, and that's mainly the latency issue and jitter is, is the big one. So um, as I said, some of them will allow you to host your own server and that helps a lot, but you've got to be pretty technically inclined to do that a lot of musicians are but a lot of them are not so whether or not that suits you it's kind of up to you um mm -hmm. but i'm certainly gonna play around with with these um and see how they work yeah we have some people commenting here again uh, thompson media talking about how the ninjam didn't work for him uh because he's working with classical musicians 
but that mm-hmm. Jazz Kazan is uh, his front runner so far. So it's nice to see people okay. are actually trying these tools. Um, Great. Let us know in the chat if you see any others here. Um, we have one more question here about how we are doing our audio setup. So we have a slide that we can show you, which basically it becomes our last slide in every presentation we do now because people always ask us how we're doing this. Yeah. Um, so it's showing like what Dave talked about earlier today. We are both in our homes running our our camera feeds into and our and an audio feed into a Pearl Mini. And from that Pearl Mini, we're broadcasting to a Pearl 2, which is our production uh, system. This is the Pearl 2 is located in our Ottawa office and it is streaming out. We're showing a diagram here how it's streaming to Crowdcast. Well, that's not true. We're streaming to YouTube and Facebook today. Uh, but right. we used this for a webinar we did the other day. And then we have an entirely different uh, back channel for our audio. And that is exactly what we're talking about today uh, because we want a really low latency audio connection. So Dave and I, you know, we don't step on each other's toes when we're speaking uh, quite as much. And to do that, we want the lowest latency we can get. And so we just use Zoom mostly because it's convenient and it's our uh, communication tool that we use every day. Um, so we're, our audio is kind of over Zoom but for communication. We have a completely separate audio channel that we're communicating over than the one that we're broadcasting over. So I don't hear this mic feed that's coming out in our broadcast today. I only hear a different Zoom feed. So a little right. bit complicated, but that's kind of what we're up to. Yep. Yeah, and that's that's been a fairly new thing for us, but it's worked extremely well. Um, so we're happy to be able to get our audio and video quality up to where we want it to be with SRT while still using uh, tools like Zoom to give us the, the interactivity we need. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, a Starlink reference. It wouldn't be a live show without a reference to Starlink changing the face of everything that we do. It used to be that 5G would be the comment we'd get uh, within every uh, <laughs> webinar or live show. And so now it is Starlink to take that place. Um, thanks everybody for watching today. We will be back here on Thursday at three o'clock. So tune in then. Uh, if you subscribe to our channel, you'll get a little notification on when we're going live. Uh, so that might be of help to you. And if you have things you want us to talk about on the live show, send us an email to, I think it's info at epifan.com. Well, I know that will get to us. Um, so go there and come to our website to learn about Pearl Mini and SRT and everything that we're talking about here today. Um, thanks, Dave. This was fun. Yeah, it was great to talk about. And I'm definitely going to try out some of these tools. Maybe we'll get together and uh, have some fun. See how yeah, we let's do try. With them. Yeah, okay. All right. All right. See you later, Bye everybody. For now.